Once you've bought a mountain bike, a mountain bike helmet has surely got to be the most important thing you're going to buy next. I mean, it protects your noggin for a start. In this video today, we're going to be looking at all the different types of mountain bike helmet there are out there, help you navigate which one's best for you and also how they differ from road helmets. Mountain bike helmets, they are generally designed to protect more areas of the head over a road bike helmet. So you can see, for example, on this one, the back comes down lower, it sits a little lower. Uh, and that's because when you crash on a mountain bike, it can be in any direction. Not that it can't on a road bike, of course, but you never know where that crash is gonna happen as it can be very unexpected depending on what you're riding a lot of the time. You'll also notice a mountain bike helmet, well, it'll generally have a peak on the front and that's gonna to be to keep the elements out of your eyes, the sun, the rain, snow, sleet, hail, you name it. It just helps with that, just extra protection. What are those different types of lid then? Well, first up in my hands, I have a cross country lid. Very well ventilated. They seldom have a visor. Um, and also the makeup of them, generally they are a little bit thicker as well to help with those heavy impacts on rocks and other such hard surfaces. Very good type of helmet for cross country, fit for that purpose, but doesn't quite offer the same protection as a trail lid. This is my trail or enduro lid, if you like. Now, unlike its cross country counterpart, it's still very well ventilated, but the vents are smaller to offer more protection. It's actually almost slightly thicker again as well to absorb those impacts. And as you can see, another big noticeable difference is the peak on the front. Like I said, to keep the weather and the elements and the sun and whatnot out of your eyes. If you can tell by the shape of it, it also sits slightly lower down at the back to protect help the base of the skull. And actually this one's even got a cool nifty little device for keeping your goggle strap in place as well mountain biking changes and so do helmet requirements. With things like the EWS taking off and big days in the saddle becoming more and more popular with people, protection for your head was required. But you don't want a trail helmet, you need something a little bit more, you don't want a big full face, so these lightweight full face helmets have started springing up. Well ventilated still, but still with a, a chin guard to help with that protection. They really help keep your head cool for those long days in the saddle, but give you the confidence should you come off or start riding wilder terrain. If you didn't want to be stuck with one of these sort of full face lightweight helmets, well then you can now actually get full faces with a detachable chin piece, giving you the option of having two helmets in one if you like. So you can wear your trail lid part of it on your liaison and then when you're going to bomb it back down, pop the chin piece back on and then you've got that full face back which does lead me nicely onto our next helmet. The full face, ultimate protection. Now these things, they are generally gonna give you the ultimate and the most comprehensive protection of all the types of lid out there. I mean, they cover you 360 wherever you take a hit. However, that protection does come at a price. As you can see, well, they are less ventilated than an XC or a trail helmet. And yep, there is weight penalty to play for uh, as well. Generally only worn by sort of free riders, downhill racers and stuff like that. The proper full face. If you're thinking of getting one, well, then these are definite things to take into account. Let's talk about fit now then. And it seems silly, but having a properly fitting helmet is incredibly important. If your skid lid doesn't fit your head properly, then, well, when you crash, it could move around or even fall off. So getting the correct sizing, making sure the straps are done up tight, things like that are really, really crucial. A great way to find a proper fitting helmet is to head down to your local bike shop. This is a really good idea because normally they will have a lot of different helmets for you to try. Much like shoes, not all helmets fit exactly the same. So being able to go somewhere and get some professional advice and try lots of different ones on and compare them is a really, really good idea. Online reviews are another great way of seeing what other people think of helmets. Do take these with a pinch of salt though, obviously, because like I said, everyone's head and fit is different. So it's not always something worth taking as gospel, but sometimes like on shoes, I'll use that as a reference again, because it's a really good one. You might have to size up just down to the shape of the helmet if it's slightly rounded or more overly whatever the manufacturer makes 
However, if you are gonna buy something online, then do make sure they have like a good returns policy, uh, just in case. You don't wanna be stuck with a helmet that doesn't fit you and just wear it anyway. It's, it's not worth doing. Adjustability then, well, this refers to what you can do to the helmet to make it fit your head properly once you've chosen your desired one. Some helmets will have like a pinch style system where you'll squeeze two points together to tighten the strap around your head. Or like this one here, we've got like a, a wheel ratchet system whereby you twist the wheel and it will tighten that strap. Both do the same thing and both work really good. They're just different methods of achieving the same thing. Each time you start your ride, start it with the helmet loosely done. That way you can pop it on nice and easily and tighten it to a nice snug fit every time and then undo it when you get to the end of your ride or when you're done with it for the day. It just means that each time you'll be able to adjust it perfectly how you want it, rather than squeeze a helmet that's already done up tight on top of your head, it can be quite uncomfortable. Chin strap. Uh, now with these, you want them not done up too tight. You don't want it to be blooming, cutting the hairs off of your chinny chin chin. At the same time, you don't want it so loose that it hangs down here. And obviously if you do have a crash, the chin strap could come up and hit you in the chin or the face and your helmet comes off either. So you want it just so it sits nice and snugly underneath your chin here. But like I said, not too tight so that it digs in or makes it hard to breathe or anything like that. Pretty much all chin straps are gonna have a buckle very similar to this one here, which is easily doable and undoable and adjustable like this. And then unadjust like this, much like an air hostess. Full face helmets on the whole don't have quite the same adjustability as the trail or the XC lid. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty fixed around here, so there's no tightening that up. Some manufacturers will offer different pad thickness options, so you can tune it that way. Um, and the buckle to do the chin strap is the same as the others. But it's just obviously really important if you are gonna go down the full face route, make sure you definitely do get the right size on that. As like I said, there's no fine tuning the fit on it as much. Tech features are something that have come on a long way in helmets in recent years as well, with a particular focus on ways of stopping a sort of side impact or a rotational impact so that the helmet moves around the head. The most well-known out there is MIPS, Multi-Directional Impact Protection System. A lot of manufacturers will employ and use this system inside their own helmets. Almost, it's like a layer that goes inside that moves independently to the helmet. So like I said, if you strike your head, the helmet will rotate around as opposed to twisting your whole head. Other companies, much like POC here, do use their own system. We've got the POC spin system in this Tectal helmet here. What is SpinTech from POC? Well, they've designed the pads in their helmets to move in any direction, dispersing forces from regular impacts by placing them in specific areas to spread the load. This allows the helmet to move independent to the head should it take a hit. GCN made a great video a few months ago where they actually visited the MIPS factory. So if you wanna know more about how that system works, we'll follow the link in the description below. In other helmet technology, we've seen things actually crossing over from other sports. Things like skiing, where backcountry skiers would go out and they'd have what was called the Rico system. So should the worst happen, they get caught in an avalanche, it's actually a transponder or a tracker, if you like, that allows them to be found. This has come over into the bike world and is now actually incorporated into helmets, which is a really good idea because if you were to go out for big days in the middle of nowhere and have an accident, sadly, it can really up the chances of you being found quickly and effectively should you be severely injured, let's say. Hopefully not. Now, along with Rico technology in this POC lid, they are actually incorporating what's called NFC medical technology as well. The NFC medical ID tag will have everything from your personal details and medical details, so things like allergies, blood type, but also emergency contact details everything that you could possibly want for the uh, emergency services to do their job as best as possible. A really good idea, actually. Specialized do something similar to this called Angie. Now, it's a device that they have on the back of their helmets, a small sort of chip, if you like, but it's not specific to specialized helmets, which is really good. It can actually be put on any helmet out there. So no matter what lid you've got, it can be as safe as possible. When you have a crash, it will send out a signal telling uh, family or your emergency contacts that you choose exactly where you are, but actually can also be used as a live track device as well. So your loved ones will always know where you're going for a spin. Both good and bad, actually, that. Oof. 
Other features worth thinking about when buying a helmet then? Well, nifty little things. Like I said, this one for an Enduro trail helmet, that has got something to hold your goggles in place. If you are of the XC inclination, well, if you're riding with glasses and you want to pop them on your head, it's got little rubber inserts just either side of the helmet to help grip those glasses in place, keep them nice and safe so they don't wobble out and fall away. All these little details are just things worth thinking about which can really make or break a good helmet. It's really important that the helmet you do buy is the safest it can be and is going to give you the most protection it can be as well. So that's why standards these days are so high on helmets. All of these helmets here and pretty much every helmet out there has to meet very stringent, very tight guidelines when it comes to safety and passing these tests. Now there are some smaller companies out there that may not quite fully pass every single one so it's really worth checking that they do uh, conform like i said to all the standards and often i know you guys can't quite see that on the camera maybe but it does have the sticker on it showing that it meets those regulations now i know that this one's going to protect my noggin I know I've banged on about Blumen buying helmets left, right and centre here and that they are, after a bike, the most important thing you can get. So when it comes to actually purchasing one, well, how much are you going to spend? I can't tell you how much to spend, but I can recommend you spend as much as you can and sensibly can afford to on a helmet. Now, a good helmet could set you back 100 quid, could set you back less, could set you back more. There is no uh, set amount to spend. I would recommend, like I said, buying the best one you can. Generally, the more you spend, the more features you're going to get on it, such as the Rico system or the NFC medical ID tag, you know, all great things, but you can still get a very, very good safe helmets for far cheaper. So just shop around, have a look at what you can afford and buy the safest one you can. Oof, okay, that's it for helmets on this blustery, chilly day today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you managed to learn something about sort of the different styles of helmets out there, how they protect you and also sort of the technology involved. It's pretty crazy now. But um, yeah, as always, thank you for watching. Don't forget, if you want to see some more GMBN, hit the old subscribe button. We're off. Happy riding, everybody. Stay safe and I'll catch you next time.